Why do I keep one presser foot on my sewing machine most of the time? Welcome to The Sewing Report, I'm Jen. This channel is all about sewing crafts and DIY projects, and lately I feel like there's a lot of newcomers here to the channel. Welcome, especially if you are a beginner sewist. I'm so glad you're here, and I've been getting quite a few questions on videos about the presser foot I'm using with different sewing projects, so I thought I would address that, and you may have noticed in videos that this walking foot is on my sewing machine in most videos. So why do I do that? I would say I keep the walking foot on like 95% of the time. Part of that, I'll be honest, laziness. But the majority of the reason is because this foot is my favorite. If I had a holy grail, like could only have one presser foot, it would be the walking foot. So I did a video a while back about presser feet and what they'd all do. And except for that video, I'll be honest, this foot still remains on the sewing machine most of the time. And I only tried out those other feet for the sake of the video just to see what they do. Now they did work for those purposes, but for most general sewing projects, I love the walking foot. So the walking foot helps feed fabric through your sewing machine evenly. So if you notice with a standard presser foot, it's flat. It does not have the little teeth that the walking foot does. So sometimes, especially if you have layers or bulky fabrics, the bottom fabric will continue feeding through the sewing machine, but the top fabric might lag behind. So what the walking do foot does is make up for that. So there are teeth and feed dogs, called feed dogs, on the walking foot itself so that when you are sewing with it, it feeds the layers on both the top and bottom. Now the walking foot is great for a lot of all-purpose sewing, especially quilting or anything with a lot of layers, like I do a lot of bags, and also for a lot of my garment sewing, I find the walking foot is very good to have. So that's pretty much why I love the walking foot, and I'll also insert a clip here from the presser foot video just showing how I install the walking foot. So here it is. It comes with a metal quilting guide to sew equally spaced parallel lines. To install this foot, you will remove the presser foot holder. Hook the connecting fork onto the needle clamp screw and the other fork to the presser foot screw. Tighten the presser foot holder screw securely. According to the manual, only use this foot to do straight or zigzag stitches, not decorative. For the test, I'm using number 37, a piecing straight stitch with a seam allowance of 6.5 millimeters from the right edge of the presser foot. My sample is a quilt sandwich, batting in between two layers of fabric. The foot isn't designed to use in reverse because the top feed dogs will move fabric forward while the bottom feed dogs will move it backwards. After sewing a few rows, I put the quilting guide on to demonstrate for quilting. I tend to use a stitch length of 3.5 because I think it makes the stitching look more prominent. Now, I feel lucky enough that I discovered the walking foot pretty early on in my sewing journey. Uh, at the time, I was sewing on a vintage Singer, which is a really great machine. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles and modern technology of the Brother CS7000i that I'm currently sewing on. Walking feet are available for pretty much any sewing machine. You just have to look up what model you have and then search for walking feet, and usually you can find something. There's name brand versions. There are like generic knockoff versions. I've used both. I did use kind of a knockoff off for the Vintage Singer. I was able to use that for I think about six months. It did end up breaking. This is an official Brother walking foot and it came with the Brother CS7000i, which was one of the reasons I was interested in that model is because a walking foot can be 20 to $30 extra, sometimes more, depending on what sewing machine you have. My other sewing machine is a Janome 7700. That was mainly a quilting machine and it has an AccuFeed built-in walking foot, which was a great bonus for me. I will say for the price that I paid for the brother, this walking foot is more than sufficient and I've been using the heck out of it. It's great. So I'll link a couple walking feet down below in the description box. I also have sewn on the Ever Sewn Sparrow 25 and I did purchase an accessory kit that came with a walking foot and came with free motion quilting feet, that sort of thing. And that was a really handy thing to have. That model did not come with it. I ordered a little set, came in a really cute little case. And on that sewing machine, I pretty much kept the walking foot as my default foot there too. So obviously I'm a big fan of the walking foot. So for everyone that's been asking what presser foot I'm using, if you see this, this is the walking foot. I need, I probably use this in like, I would say over 90% of the videos. It's, it's on there. It's on my sewing machine pretty much at all times. I hardly ever take it off. I've been trying to think about instances where I took the walking foot off. And the only examples I could come up with were when I was trying to do buttonholes, I would take it off for that. Or if I was trying to 
to sew on buttons themselves, I would put on that little clear plastic foot. And sometimes if I'm doing something real specific, maybe zippers, but I've done a lot of zippers on the walking foot too, and it works pretty well. I have no complaints on that. You are not supposed to do reverse stitches on the walking foot, because I guess the feed dogs can't go backwards, but I kind of do that too. You're not supposed to, but I do it anyways. So I just kind of wanted to explain why I keep this foot on my sewing machine over night. I would say 95% of the time and just kind of explain that to everyone, especially if you're new to sewing, you're probably like, what is this? And I think it's great. If you don't have a walking foot for your sewing machine, highly recommend picking one up because they come in handy. And I find that my quilting projects and anything I'm sewing like bags or something with a lot of layers, I just find the project uh, comes out a lot better when I'm using the walking foot. The stitching is more even. There's not as much like puckering. And I also will glue based a lot. So that helps cut down on the fabric shifting as you're sewing. So that is the walking foot. I hope you guys found this video helpful. And again, if you're new here to the channel. Thank you so much for subscribing and coming over here. We are doing a series called Learn to Sew in 2020 using the Brother CS7000i and this lovely foot that came with the machine. And if you want to see that video about the presser foot, I will link it up here and also down in the description box. And I explained how to use the different feet that come with the Brother CS7000i. Anyways, I'm Jen. I'll see you guys again in the next video.